And, and here we go. And this is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the uh, 30th, I guess, close to the end of May here in 2020. And I'm doing a solo today, so I'll probably do about an hour. Might try to read something for you folks. And did I make it live? It says live. Hey, everybody. So, uh, do that. I think I'm on. I'm on the radio here for you guys today with that. Thanks to Grimner for giving me the place to go do this. Hey, thanks. So, I see him on the chat saying everything's good. And then um, we got the bots and bodies for the chatters so that you can discuss the theory of irregularity. We got Barman and Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Anti underscore, Asmo, Circulo, Hello, Dan Van Meter, Me, Frumpy, Frumpy Work, uh, Graham Z may or may not be uh, available today, so she's probably just logged on. Had a little problem, thanks, sir. Had a little problem with her, with her mom being ill. So she's unavailable for comment until she finds out what exactly happened to Ma. Uh, then we got uh, Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, hey, Bubbler, uh, Trust Number One, <laughs> uh, hey, Doug. Ben White, with the Dork, Woodman, Phantom, Chaskura, Chloe Singular, Cyborg Noodle, E-Man, Ensiv Gramit, J's, Nines, J's, Kiss, Matt WJ202, Ponesauce, Sock Puppet, Smatez, and the holiest Roger of them all. And that's, uh, that's your chitter chatterers for the, for the day. And it's no surprise that I'm all the way out here in the end of the world and I know that America is on fire. People are a little bit <clears throat> uncomfortable. And I, I, me and Cirque have an opinion about this that seems to be a little different than uh, what the news people are saying. Anyway, because what people are on YouTube are doing is taking bits of the news, right? The local Minneapolis fucking paid state news and putting that out. So you only hear the state side of it. And then we got the video, you know, the live links, past links. Other cities are jumping in. So they're trying to spread this. And I, I say they because I think it's uh, I think it's propped up behind what we're told. I don't think we're told the truth about any of this. And then by the time the truth comes out, it's too late. You can't undo it. It's, it's pretty much, it, it's been cooking for, I guess, forever. Most people don't, they don't love their government. You know, they might even say they love their government, but they're just saying that because they don't want the government to kill them. Because this government and its, and its agents, police, man, these people are dangerous. But, I really can't figure out, right, at this point in that now, the guy that supposedly got killed over the bad check slash $20 counterfeit, whatever. Uh, maybe he didn't get killed. You know, maybe that one more time, this is the, the system and, and the MSM teamed up together to present us with some bullshit. So anyway, so the next thing I know, after that, then Minneapolis is protesting. Then, not too far into that, then, you know, they get the cops in there to control the protesters. And the next thing you know, you got buildings burning. And I just find it really far, hard to believe. It's far-fetched, I was going to say, but it's hard to believe that somebody that lives in a area, whatever, 10, 20 block area, would ignite a fire to uh, protest something in their own neighborhood. I just... Still don't believe that. But I do understand mob uh, mentality. I've been to huge concerts and shit like that. And the momentum from everybody else is, is overwhelming. So 
So, yeah, I know what mob the go with the flow is. But I still think that in the end of it all, they'll prove that the people that initiated all the violence and the burnings and whatnot, they were part of the system. Probably cops. And if not cops, agents of the police, some form of uh, enforcement, to, you know, those that type, the type that uh, has to be in control and carry a weapon because deep down inside they're terrified of you. <laughs> you might fuck them up or kill them. But even worse, what if you just crippled them? I'm mean, sure they get pensions and all that shit, but I'd rather walk. Okay, and all these people that talk about punishment, uh, how they deal with crime and punishment is so pointless. <laughs> it's about money. It's not about it's not about anything uh, other than somebody got hurt, so somebody needs to be paid. This is what we've been turned into. And I support the shit like uh, dueling. Yeah. Hey, you got a problem with me? Hey, bring it on. We can go out to the back 40 and shoot at you at each other from 20 feet. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know. But I think that we get along better because the threat of insulting somebody to the point of, hey, they might shoot you in your forehead for it, might tone your tongue just a tad. <laughs> I think people would spend a lot less time looking at ways to be a, a nasty fuck and be more concerned about living and getting along with each other. But all the chains that we got, are <laughs> they're all invisible, so you don't even know they're there. It's a, the most brilliantly thought-out game I've ever seen. And it doesn't look like a game to somebody that's actually playing it. <laughs> a lot of those people, they, they got a name for it. You ready for this? They call it Reality. And it, yeah, it might be their reality, but... Uh, oh, Grim's still playing music. Uh-oh. I feel... Hurt. <laughs> no kidding. He's playing ZZ Top. So it's hard to compete with you like that. I just... Uh, I got to get paid. Hmm. Or maybe that's his little input into the uh, dork table conversation today that I'm having alone, because... Poor Mary, she's got uh, an ill mother, and stuff had to be taken care of. Anyway, so today, I'm going to call the episode of The Dark Table, Restrictive Social Experiments in 2020. <laughs> because I think that's what all this is. This is like, a, it, yeah, it's an experiment to see how far people can be pushed. Uh, I don't know how correct I am on that, because I don't really live in a big society, but what I saw here was people being pushed around by a threat of something that could happen. I'm not worried about what, what was happening. Like, we didn't have a riot. You know, uh, we weren't invaded by Poland. No. Uh, nobody even got sick. It was all this threat. Ah, you're going to get sick and you're over 60. You're going to die. Ah. So... People panicked because that's that's what people do when they hear horrid news out of absolutely nowhere. Pretty much, you know, they go, "Hey, you're not supposed to do that," <laughs> but it's always too late because the crime is done first. This is why I'm I'm so uh, neutral on prosecuting people and all that. I say, bring back dueling. Let let the guy that got stolen from and the guy that stole let them shoot it out. That'll show you who's right and who's wrong in the end. But no, they got to drag it into court where everybody in, fuck involved in the courtroom makes money off of your crime. <laughs> Except you. you, you get to go to jail or something or get not guilty or whatever they do in jail, you know, in court. And all these fun things that come from it. Because we've got to uh, lock them up and throw away the key mentality. And other countries don't share that uh, that kind of uh, severity in punishment. I think these other people, what they try to do is 
teach people not to kill each other. <laughs> it's not good if you run around killing people. So they don't. And then other countries, if you, especially if you watch enough television and films, because I, I'm a film buff and I like my killer diller movies, man, let me tell you. But uh, I think it kind of taints the, the mind some way that you can't explain it. Just, just leave it at that. So we see things and, and it numbs us. And that's that. And some people maybe uh, maybe want to live out what they see in the movies. I don't know. I've never seen it. I've read a shitload of murders and killings and this things and that things. And in my whole entire life, I've never walked in on anybody that was killing anyone, robbing a bank, or none of that fun shit. I had a very boring, boring, dull life considering all the places I went. And, and now, in this retirement village... Wow. Oh, speaking of the retirement village, I guess to give give you the Frederick's Bark update because the people in town, I, I went to the bar, had a couple of beers, and the people in town were playing liar's dice. Crowded, sitting at, all at the same table. You don't see a mask in town anywhere now. No gloves, no, you know, none of that shit. Social distancing crap. So, uh, and rumor has it that if they try to pull this another uh, again, it ain't gonna. It's not gonna fly well here. So, but you know, we'll see what happens. Might not happen again. Run with it. Might happen in other places. But I'm pretty sure we we had a uh, our fair share of the coronavirus in Freddy Town. Came and went, and now it's gone, and there's no support to bring it back. But to keep me occupied, because now there's no coronavirus to worry about. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, now they've got you know uh, civil unrest in the motherland. You know where I'm from. Well, not in California. I don't. I kind of expected California to go up in flames. But I read uh, Port Portland. I don't. Know, Woody might know. I think it was Portland. I don't think it was Seattle. But uh, Atlanta, where else? And I read somebody, po I don't know if they posted it or just typed it, but if this is spreading to Greece, I don't know how. But, you know, you can uh, you can find anything you want to read on the Internet. Just look for it. It's there somewhere. Speaking of read, wait a minute. I got a link. I think it might be dork table material, if you ever heard it. Dork table material. This might be it. Let me find it. And I'm going to copy it up and throw it for the RLN people to take a poke at if they want to. Might do a little bit of reading out of this. And it was called uh, From the Trenches, the WorldReport.com. And uh, it's about Billy Boy. You know, Bill, uh, what's Billery? <laughs> Bill Gates. Billery has called Announcing Expose Bill Gates Global Day of Action on June 13, 2020. Hmm. So it's, this is the activist post. I don't even, I'm not familiar with any of this. I just like the story. So if, if you're pro Bill Gates, turn the radio off now. You're going to cry. And if you're against Bill Gates, turn it up. I might not be talking loud enough. <laughs> okay. It says here... Um, for immediate release, announcing Expose Bill Gates, oh, Expose Bill Gates, Global Day of Action on June 13, 2020. What? A nonpartisan coalition of alternative media organizations and activist groups are calling for a global day of action to expose Bill Gates and his control agenda. I agree with the, the exposing bit, but I don't think it's Billy Boyle by himself. They give say, they give a group of murdering cunts a face like Bill Gates, this dorky, goofy. Couldn't you know he couldn't fight his way out of a a, a wet bag kind of a look to it. You know, then he's married to. I looks I that Melinda looks like a man. I'm sorry, people, but. 
<clears throat> I am not the most vain person on earth. Probably uh, shouldn't pick on people for the way that they look because of the way I look. But I'm not a public figure trying to get you to inoculate yourself with my magic goo. So I'm going to say <laughs> that Bill Gates' wife looks like a man. And it's very disturbing to me. I'm not one of those... Mod like, Cirque's all modern day. She can deal with all that. She grew up with all that shit. Me, not so much. That came way later, all that weirdoness. And I wasn't too hot with the weirdoness when it was, you know, first showing itself, I suppose. But now it's like, hey, if you can, you can go out roller skating in a G-string and, you know, people will cheer you on in the world call you brave, <laughs> and I say, no, <laughs> I don't fucking want that, so, um, circumstances, I would suppose, in life, just took me somewhere where that won't ever happen, <laughs> the biggest, uh, the biggest surprise to me was, I was having a beer one year, in a, a big crowd of, I don't know, 10 Harleys came rolling by, paired up with their wives on the back, and these guys were all my age, so, Hmm. It was it was somewhere between scary and funny. I'm not sure what to call it. But they were holding their own on their bikes, you know, at a slow pace down a tight street, paired up two by two. So they knew what they were doing. And <laughs> but I like to tease people. Make fun of them and shit like that. Have a giggle. And then when, you know, when I don't, <laughs> I get a little flustered because uh, compliments just... I come from this kind of Bill Gates world, you know, where the guy's got a fucking computer company that is just... It fucks up all the time because of virus. Virus, virus, virus. We got virus in your computer. Blah, 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 blah. You need this and you need that. Okay, well, that's the computer. Now this idiot is trying to convince people that we operate at the same simplicity of a fucking computer. <laughs> uh, it sounds all complicated to operate a computer. And the actions to it are way simpler than the details, like the coding, shit like that. You know, the presentation, blah, blah, blah. But what it actually entails, I don't... I don't think this guy was smart enough to do what he claims he did, Mr. Gates. <laughs> Watch me in, you know, disappear because I have a bad opinion about Bill. <laughs> well, if that does happen, it was nice knowing you guys and all, but I, I don't think so. You know, like Grim was saying on, on I think it was uh, the Leftovers podcast, you know, we're, we're small and you fly under the radar of, of uh, criticism and judgment and shit when the big boys don't even know you're there. So, yeah. And you've got a pretty loyal crew, so to speak. People know you for a long time here on Ireland. And I'm sure the site is used for other things. And uh, Carrie's other shows. There's Chuck Jelly out in, uh, I think he's in New Jersey and back in America. And being here in Denmark, I'm on a time zone change that puts me forward to the states so it's always wow six seven eight california nine hours later than you know when you're live i'm sleeping <laughs> old age does that shit to you people you get old <laughs> and then you enjoy laying down and going hey i think i'll close my eyes for a few hours couldn't do that shit when i was young Anyway, I'm going to try to read some of this. I don't, I don't really want to, but... Because hmm, it's about... I don't know. It's a... What is it about? It's about believing what you're told, I think. Whatever this thing is that we're going through as a collective right now. And some people have had the fuck enough, <laughs> is my opinion. You know, you can only... Um, you can only step on somebody's throat for so long before either they get up and fight back or you die. And it seems to, to me that, well, it's just an example. I don't mean it physically, but 
in a mental sense. You know, you're having your, your livelihood taken from you. Some places are so restrictive over this hoax that you can't go outside, you can't... Kids, I mean, what they've done to people over this story is... It's going to haunt you, uh, I think, later, if you get the truth out of it. Uh, now, if the, if the system still manages to keep power and keep throwing these fucking bullshit stories and lies at people like they're doing with the uh, protests in, in Minneapolis... Now, I haven't heard George Soros' name brought up on TV. Nobody said, who started this? Uh, and I think it was a, a live streamer, maybe something like that. It was somebody independent had gone through the points of taking a better look at, at who started it. And they got a picture of this guy wearing a mask and shit. But the uh, had breathing things at the end of the... Uh, whatever you call them, at that point out. And they were pink. So they're going to do a back, back uh, check up on him and find out who he is. Where did you get those? Who makes that mask? Find out who bought that mask. And there's your guy. And they've got the technology to do it. And here's this kid on here uh, encouraging others in his, you know, like coding, like what Grimm does. Well, this is just like that. Just a different version of it. They're, and they're networked. And they're all plugged in and they know how to look for shit and find what they want and bring it back. And, oh, wow, we didn't have all that. We had pencils and papers. Remember? <laughs> but, back when they had pencils and papers, they still had the National Guard. And what the National Guard did uh, to the protesters in 1970 was killed four of them to stop it. They opened fire on, on an unarmed crowd and killed four of them. So, this, I think this is uh, staged and it's part, the part of it that's real is where the, the population gets drawn into the drama. But I don't think the population actually uh, initiated any of this. It all seems like a, it's too perfect. It's a perfectly perfectly done plan it's going from now coast to coast so you get cell phones videotaping all this shit live streaming it of course the next people in the next town can do that hey watch this and it's escalated now they're they're standing in groups of hundreds on interstates and stopping traffic letting people go by when they feel like it I mean, wow this is not this Nothing good will come from any of this. The sooner this ends, the better for everybody. And if Trump doesn't open his pile, <laughs> get the Fed involved. I guess the National Guard is pretty much getting involved, but the governor probably did that. I don't think... Uh, I don't know. I don't really have any experience at this level of uh, loss of control. <laughs> There's nobody in control right now in some places. That's the reality of it. It's when you see people in um, black armored looking suits and guns and helmets. and That means that the government is struggling to get back control. And uh, Beatle says the army is on alert. Okay, now, it's as an American, it was my understanding when I lived there that the United States military... Had no uh, had no right to come at me. Period. They if I they'd have to call the cops. They have no right to physically do anything about anything I do. But things have changed. Apparently now it's the Beatle says the army is on alert. Okay, to do what? So, what is it? I saw the Boston thing. Remember the marathon? That was live on television, too, so, you know, more more PSYOP. But the point it made was that if the military wants to go door-to-door -door looking for somebody that doesn't even exist, they're, they're going to do that. And what are you going to do? Are you going to say, no, you can't come in, get your little thirty-eight, protect yourself? Fuck no. You can open the door and let them look. <laughs> Stay alive. That's the reality of it. But then you get these, you know, I, we call them keyboard commandos. You know? They're going to kick ass and take names and shoot people. No, they're not. 
every time anybody goes against the government, the government just wipes them the fuck out. Now they're... Now I don't know if this killing here in Minneapolis was even real. I can't figure this one out. Maybe you guys can. You're, you're over there, so you got a better grip. Now I'm just getting video links and look at this and look at that, and I feel it's the same old... They're taking me down the road they want me to see for a reason that will present itself in years to come, whatever that reason is. But, nah, this is probably no more real than uh, 9-11. Not, see, not that 9-11 didn't happen real. Just that the story that you get told for why it happened, how it happened, and all the players involved with it, that'll change. <laughs> Oh, man, when they start blaming politicians for whose fault this um, is, because <laughs> somebody's going to have to stand up and go, okay, it's my fault, I fucked it up, I'll go in here and I'm going to fix it. But we don't hear anything even close to that, do we? Mm -hmm. But what I have noticed is that they're, they're given a lot of uh, airtime to the angry. And the angry... As, even though I agree with them, I don't feel like they're wrong, but their their presentation is so unattractive. You know, it makes you kind of like, well, if that's the way you behave, I guess I can see why you know why you're getting your ass whipped. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe that guy started out calm and peaceful and ended up all angry and screaming into a microphone and a camera because he's. At the end of his wit, you know, they just locked him down. Maybe they took his job. Maybe he's got no money. You don't know. You know the possibilities, but you don't know by looking at a guy for 20 seconds. You don't know what his life was about. And we're all being herded into the apathy thing where you're not supposed to give a shit about the next guy in the first place. Fuck him. You know, this is about you. Me, 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 and you, uh, you don't exist. <laughs> You're a nuisance in my way to where I'm going. And, wow, that's what society wants. They got it, because people are pissed the fuck off. Ooh. Um, but I don't really know if it's... See, this is why I can't figure out if how much of this is scripted is most of what I do see people talking about is the guy that got killed or something general. Ah, my people this, niggers that, blah, blah, blah. Not too much on, uh, I've been locked down in this bullshit story for three months. Not one, one person like that has not stepped up. We seem to do that on uh, <laughs> reallibertymedia.com, on the podcast that Grim lets us do. Uh, the group that I uh, associate with, I suppose you call it, is that's what it is you, in a group. Miss Mary and Rob Works, Larry. Oh, Grimner and Moose Girl. Those folks don't, uh, they don't seem to have a fondness for the uh, status quo. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that really is. You know, uh, being told what to do, I suppose. Because there's suggestions. In, in society that you just assume, you know. And then there's rules. Some places find it necessary to post their rules all over the place. <clears throat> now, surprisingly, the rules that matter the most, they don't need to post signs. You know, no robbing, no robbing the store. <laughs> uh, no killing on these premises. You know, uh, what it's in, no adulterating on the in the parking lot, shit like that. We already know these things. So we don't have sex in the store. Don't kill anybody that's waiting in line that's in our way. We want them to move faster, so we kill them to get rid of them. No. But, have you ever watched Netflix? <laughs> wow. Man, they're, they're running out of laws so that they make TV shows. Well, I call them TV shows. I mean, Netflix shows. And then they create crimes that don't even exist to uh, just fill up a, an hour of story time, like I do, only with uh, complete nonsense. 
me, I just talk about life, you know, shit that I think. These these uh, TV programs, they create stories that are not possible. You couldn't live like that. No, everybody that you live around would know. And th- th- of course, they they've got people living so far apart from each other that it it wouldn't be as as busy as they make it sound because when you got to drive a half hour to get somewhere <laughs> anyway I guess if you live it you know what I'm talking about if you've watched the TV then you're probably confused about right now <laughs> well, because you know in film you blink an eye and they they were just in New York yeah look now they're in Salt Lake City boom boom and that's not how life really works and it does, but not as far as travel. God, we don't time travel. <laughs> That's my favorite of all the of all the stories they tell with film. Time travel stories. Hey, there's Vinny. I haven't seen Vinny in a while. But of all the things you got, time travel stories are probably the best. My favorite one. Yeah, hey, Doug and Vinny are, are uh, gonna say, "Hey, there's Grimner," because we got us this. this uh, what is this? May. So people are, that aren't locked down get to go the hell outside. Yeah, age, Vinny. And people that are, you know, lucky enough to do that should. So I didn't expect much as far as people being available to hear the show live today. Just the, the shut ins and the people that don't want to go out. I'm, I'm kind of on and off with that. I'm, sometimes I like to go out for a couple of weeks and then I just stop. For months, don't do it. So, and I never know. It's just kind of a mood. <laughs> Vinny and his nicknames. Hey, he's got radishes already in Arkansas. And greens. I mean, you grow them yourself, though, right? Or you on somebody else's property. Hmm. Oh, well. Anyway, so uh, while I sit here in this quiet little pocket, you know, enjoying my my daily life, I have to get away from the internet for a while, is what it's come down to, because I'm so addicted to the internet. It's like a babysitter for old people. I can do five, I get two different screens. I can keep a screen open and see if I want to chat with the room. And got another one I can play games on, or watch a film. But then after, you know, after a couple hours, I feel... Uh, kind of trapped and need to get the hell away so what I found myself doing is taking a walk <laughs> get down downtown somewhere and just sitting and being quiet and enjoying the sun not particularly in any talkative mood wasn't thinking about today what am I going to talk about on the tape not just like a blank mind and a bottle of beer and no expectation, <clears throat> except I had to be home at a certain time to uh, do the radio. Because I guess I could do the radio downtown. <laughs> that would be a kick. Do it live from the bar sometime. <laughs> I'm joking, Grim. I'd give Grim a headache for a week. Could you see that? Me with a portable rig trying to do it like Vinny. No, I, I ain't going to even try that. Anyway, how'd you get on the internet anyway? I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Hmm. Yeah, he's out. <clears throat> he says, 20 acres, he's on the mountain. So, yeah, you're not at your place then. Okay. Oh, wow. Hit the river in three directions. That's an interesting river. <laughs> a little bend in that river, isn't there? Uh... Oh, yeah, it sounds horrible, Doug. That's what it sounds. Anyway, hmm. I don't know. I think what sounds horrible is uh, what's going on in the uh, free world. That's the way to put that up, I suppose. People that are all free are all fighting for freedom because they're being oppressed by Big Brother. But they like it because they keep voting. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I mean, if this isn't the, I thought Hillary against Trump was pretty bad. That was like 
Really? Okay. But now it's going to be Trump versus Joe Biden. And there are people in America that know absolutely zero about politics. <laughs> they don't seem to get the whole political thing too well. But some of them get checks. And the people that get those checks, well, you know what? Some of them get them from the government. And some of them are cops. And some of them are on welfare. Yeah, I said the W word right here on the door table, people. Some of these low lives are actually taking money from the government. And then the other ones are, you know, don't have work because there's no work. <laughs> there is no work. There's nothing to do except reproduce. <laughs> so, guess what? <laughs> anyway, so if you know anything about, um, I guess, fiat currency, you might have an opinion. I have my opinion about fiat currency. And my opinion about it is pretty much, uh, if it's there, I guess I'll use it. If it ain't there, I'll find a commodity to trade with. Because people like to trade, and they like to barter, and they like to do things away from the state, and away from the man, everywhere I've ever been. And then you got <clears throat> the voter, you know, the nine-to-fiver that doesn't know any other way. And the way that he knows is to support these idiots that you know, he thinks are in some form of uh, a seat of decision. He can speak for me. Mr. Trump speaks for Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Trump don't speak for you. Are you insane? He's, if anything, when the shit hit the fan, he just threatened to do more damage. I'll send in the, I'll send in the military, baby. Watch this shit. Not, can we sit down and, you know, work this out somehow? Is there any way around people being violent? But, that's the state, you know, being violent, gets treated back with violence. Well, tell me that this isn't a plan. I don't see how you can. It just, it's too perfect. It's all fallen like, like a script. I've seen it so many times in, at L.A. in the 90s. Same shit. But it was, uh, or was it, was it Rodney King? Was that the riots in L.A.? I can't remember which set of riots that was from. <laughs> There's so many of these fucking things. There was one where they, these black guys pulled a driver out of his truck. And the idiot shouldn't have stopped anyway. She's in a 25-ton truck. He should have drove, but he didn't. And they took him out and beat him with a cinder block. Live on video for the whole you know, viewing audience to enjoy. And these things that we see on TV that really do happen. They're still film. It's not. It's not the same as being there physically and seeing it. But they might tell you it's the same. It might be the same for you. Maybe. I don't know. I'm pretty much just saying. It. For me, the uh, experiences of, I've had, like with my motorcycle mishap at, at 14. I don't really remember that anymore. I know it happened, but I see it in my mind a little bit, but I don't feel anything from it. So, hmm, I've just done very little trauma suffering in my life. Been very lucky. Hmm. But like they say, there's always Timara, I suppose. I tried to read a link. I couldn't get into links today. wonder why. I think because uh, Mary was going to show up today. And we were going to do a proper show. But something came up and she couldn't make it. And so I didn't really, uh, I didn't prepare. I wasn't prepared to, to do this. So I'm going to try one more link. I'm going to do at least a, do an hour today. Give you guys something to feel better about. Because, hey. I can do a lousy show all by myself. So I'm going to read uh, The Injection Fraud. It's not a vaccine. Now, that that was a catchy title. 
too. But the story, when I was reading it, didn't really seem all about the title. It seemed like they took it somewhere else. Let me, yeah. By Catherine Austin Fitz. Yeah, she had a fit and wrote this crazy stuff. It says, I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. I am not a biotech engineer. I am not an attorney. However, I read, listen, appreciate, and try to understand those who are. Hmm. Now, here's where it gets sketchy. I was an investment banker. <laughs> Until politics made it impossible to continue to practice my art. I was trained as a portfolio strategist. So I map my world by watching the financial flows and allocation of resources. See, I thought I was getting me an injection fraud link, and I'm getting this life story of somebody that I didn't want to read about. <laughs> so, oh, man, this is not my day. We're having a dork day. Hmm. Ouch. Mr. Grimner's got a few words to say on the main feed, too. Says here, uh... Mm. Protesters gather outside state capitol in Little Rock, Arkansas. Well, see, they call it protesting. Mm -hmm. But then they get one of their cop buddies in there to start a fire somewhere, dressed up as a you know, bad guy. And what's been happening is people are getting wise to this shit, and they're taking pictures of people that are doing Weird looking shit, like starting fires at a you know protest. <laughs> but still, by the time it gets to the main, you know, the main amount of people it needs to, that need to see the truth, it'll be too late. See? We've got this internet. And there's a few thousand people at a time checking out this guy's stuff, and that girl's stuff, and whatnot. But for the most part, it's not not hitting a very big crowd. You figure there's. 300 and something million people and they want half of you fighting with the other half. Whoa. And it looks like that, like it started. I don't know. I'm, I'm making an assumption based off what I've seen going on since uh, Monday. Because we did a show uh, Tuesday and when this was just brewing, and it was in the you know, uh, beginning stages, I suppose. But there's so many different ways that this has been presented to me. Is right, I guess, guess the word because I've read that the uh, the cops and Mason, and he needed to kill somebody. And I've read that the guy was uh, the guy, the black guy was a crisis actor. You name it, I've read it. I've seen every possible opinion. So I guess the place I'm supposed to be is totally confused. I have no idea what I'm looking at at this point because I've heard every story. Hmm. So fortunately, I know people online through the uh, Real Liberty Media, and I can go to them and say, "Hey, where you know you live here and there, blah blah blah. What does it look like to you?" And get the truth. So I feel pretty good about that. Or uh, I, I, who was it that posted it? Vinny or Grim? Yeah, I think it was Grimner put... Yeah, the one in Little Rock, Arkansas. That came from Grimner. But Grim wouldn't put something up unless he had a you know, a good source. And if he does put something up that's a lark or a bullshit, we, we all know it. <laughs> We've been doing this for a while now, this group. So And people here, so we all uh, started somewhere. So we got backgrounds beyond RLM. But Grimm's been around for 11 years. I haven't been on the internet for 11 years. I was a real late bloomer to the internet. I put that shit off just net like I do the phone. I still don't have a phone. But I know how to use a phone. And you know what people don't mind is, hey, can I borrow your phone? <laughs> Nobody bats an eye to that. Uh, you know, to, what are you gonna? Who are you gonna call? I'm gonna call Cirque. Oh, okay. 
and I've still only done it once. And the guy that I asked, I didn't, don't even know him except he delivers food here sometimes, I think. And we get uh, foreigners to my foreign, you know, besides being Danish, other foreigners come here and work in the food industry. Because that's pretty much what they're going to be able to do. And they deliver the food. It's a decent, clean way to make, you know, a, a, a kroner, I suppose. But the uh, local kids don't want to do that shit. They want to go to school or, and get on, or they want to go join the bike brigade. <laughs> One or the other. There, there's not a lot of choice here in Denmark either. Uh, you're going to go to Freetown and try to be an outlaw, or you're going to be a, a worker bee and go to school and get an education. And they'll pay you to do that shit. I don't know how many people uh, are familiar with the, the Danish school system. The public school system is one thing. But when you get out of the public school system and you want to go on to college, there's government subsidy. So you don't pay them to go to college. They actually pay, they invest in their people so that you know they can keep their economy going with their own workers that speak their own language. <laughs> it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant strategy. Now, where I come from, it's the exact opposite. If you're from the wrong family, <laughs> guess what, stupid? You better get a scholarship or join the military or go out and beg or do something, rob a bank. But you ain't getting in here without no money. Well, you stupid. This is a, this is a building of higher education, you know, to further yourself. Where's your check? Then I came here and found out about socialized socialism. Wow. This is pretty good over here, by the way. Yeah. Especially now that everything in the States is kind of drooping. It's not looking too hot to be in certain places in America right now. Just saying. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to live in Copenhagen right now either. So, you know, Denmark, you know, Schnenmark, it doesn't fucking matter. It's more of the uh, the community that you get surrounded by where you live. That makes a big difference. I mean, crying out loud, if I had neighbors like... Uh, some people in the chat have complained about you know, neighbors being assholes. They know. But we're... Uh, <laughs> We we don't have a police department to call here. You call the cops. You got to bring them in from Hellerod. Head down the road about twenty miles, give or take. So the cops don't like to come out here unless there's a reason. Don't don't be pestering us with nonsense and stupidity. Apparently, and very rarely do you ever see them. And when you do see them, they're usually just driving through here, going somewhere else. There's there's nothing here for them to do except have a cup of coffee, maybe take a walk, not at people. You know, they're just young kids. They're not hurting anyone, but they're still cops, and they, you know, they still could. But I'm not in America. I got to remember that part. These guys have actually gone through uh, training to uh, be nicer and kinder to the public. You know, that way when the mom and their kids walking around town doing stuff. The little kid doesn't grow up all terrified of that fucking cop <laughs> like we do at home. <clears throat> well, I did. I grew up to fear those bastards, nasty pricks, American police, police in general. But boy, the nasty. Well, when I was in Scotland, they weren't so bad. When I was in England, nah, they weren't so bad. When I was in Canada, da, 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 eh, not so bad. When I was in Mexico, I didn't even see a cop. I was in Mexico for about a month in uh, 1991, I think, give or take a month. Hitchhiked down from San Diego down to uh, Cabo and then got on a, a boat to go around and go back to San Diego, but the boat blew up, so I had to go back. And then I got back, decided to go down to, uh, where did I go? Uh, I stopped off in La Paz for the... Okay, I went to La Paz for the boat. And then I went to Cabo down at the bottom, hitchhiking. Because I wanted to see it. And it was such a... 
such a nice time in life. There was very little building. There was very little. Uh, it was very slow back in the 90s when I was there. And hitchhiking, people laughed at me. Oh, you know, speak to the Espanol. I said, no, you seem to speak English, though. <laughs> so, you know, because uh, that's just the way it's always been. No matter where I go, the people I run into, they, they always know a little bit of English. Even when they say they don't, they do. And like me, I know a little bit of Danish, but from one side of uh, this area, you drive 20 kilometers in a different direction, and it, it does sound different. <laughs> it's not quite the same. And they all know that. So it's like uh, going from uh, New Orleans to, uh, like, I don't know, Arizona. You know, what? <laughs> what that fella just say? Anyway, let's go out and go noodling. I feel like, yeah, I think I'll go noodling in Louisiana. <laughs> I wouldn't go noodling. I've been to Louisiana a few times, so but never did take up the uh, catfish hunting or any kind of fishing. I don't really, I I don't mind wasting my time, but. That, I don't know, that's just too slow for me. And I'm lazy as fuck, but wow, fishing. That takes laziness to a level I'm not capable of going to. I'm afraid if I ever got there, I'd never want to return to the real world. I don't know how you fishing people do it. Like Cirque likes to go down to the beach with the dog and all that. Ah, me, not so much. But I'm used to beaches. Uh, big, long beaches and this is a little inlet you know a little bit of water it's not it's not huge like i'm accustomed to <laughs> so i've been spoiled by uh, california florida new york new jersey a couple of places in oregon over the years and so i got to see a lot of uh, i got to see a lot of the america before it got fucked over too like living in the in the east in the 80s or Miami in the 90s. Not that it was a paradise when I was in it, but it has decayed in the last 35 years, these major metropolis that I used to hitchhike to to go have some fun. Now, wow, now they're like war zones and got lockdowns from certain states where you can't go outside of your own fucking house. They made you quit your job, and what? They shut this down. They shut all that shit down. Everything's all shut down. Hmm. Now, on top of that, hey, let's kill some niggers so we can piss off the public and start some riots. And the formula is working. And we're, b we're back in this again. And it's happened before. But usually the isolated... Uh, I think last time, what state was that in, Grimner, where they had those... Uh, it was uh, Missouri, or in, uh, it was somewhere down in the the south southeast, pretty sure. But it went went on for months. It was some kind of a uh, this this guy got killed, and the people were all pissed off about it. Um, hmm. I can't remember the name, but it was no, it was about some yeah, some black kid went and stole some cigars in a convenience store. <clears throat> And the cops killed him. I think they had excessive force, blah, blah, blah. And everybody went insane. Yeah, St. Louis? Okay. But that was the last time that I recall the, the news getting so big that it made it to the interwebs. We're all talking about, ooh, this new protest. And, but nothing came of it. But it was the same formula where... Uh, same thing, and yeah, hands up, don't shoot, yeah, I can't breathe, it's, suck my balls, whatever the fuck they come up with. It's just, I've seen it before, and before that, before that, Rodney King, and, and after, a, after a couple dozen times, you start to wonder how coincidental it's always the same exact story, just told in a different, you know, with a different flavor on this side. <laughs> whoops <laughs> yeah I guess I shouldn't have said that but I don't know I really I really don't like the intrusion of law enforcement handling me I fucking hated it I couldn't 
And they'd always ask, say, well, you got a problem with me, son? Fuck yeah, you, you're grabbing my balls. My girlfriend doesn't do that so good. Uh -huh. Crack. <laughs> Fucking smart ass. You'll say that to somebody twice. But, uh, yeah, then. But the nerve, see, how we are. Who in their right mind gets up in the morning and goes to work to go shoot somebody? Well, I think I'll go to work today and kill someone. Get paid for that. Get a little vacation time. You know, go off and spend a few weeks with wife and kids. But, <laughs> wow. I get, maybe I'm just seeing it uh, in a perverse way. Because of, you know, personal discomfort with man, baby. <laughs> and it's not so much from them handling me so badly. I've had it pretty easy over my lifetime. A few misunderstandings with those idiots. <clears throat> but nothing that ever, you know, put me in prison or none of that worse shit. Just petty shit. Because it's what they're looking for. It's a business. They got quotas to fill and... The easier their job is, the less violence. Now they've gone the other complete way. Because 30 years ago, they were happy just to arrest me. You know, Now it's like, hey, we're going to kill this motherfucker. Uh, 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 uh. What are you going to do about it? And I think they're, what are they at? Three murders a day on an average in America by the police on the civilian population. Now... I know that sounds, you guys have heard it a billion times, you live in it, but I don't here. And the people I live among, the ones that have never been out of uh, Europe, like Cirque, they don't understand. how. Why do the police kill anyone? Because their police so rarely do. Not that they have never done it, they have, but not the scale and and she says, I understand the population is bigger and all that, but still, you know, where, where, what justifies all this? <laughs> and I think the, the thing that justifies it is the collective ignorance of what really is happening. Hmm. Oh, you're a white dude, Flash. They don't give a fuck about you. Uh, well, hmm. See, that's the beauty of life is appearances are, they're all a matter of what you've been trained to recognize, too. Because when people meet me, when when you take away the paperwork uh, of what country I'm from, and neither one of my parents was American. My father was, by law, because of where he was born, but English was his second language. So, hmm. now my mother, she was born in the old country of England. So, no, she never naturalized, never wanted to be an American citizen for 10 minutes. And they both ended up leaving America, going to Europe and Scandinavia, or not Scandinavia, but the UK, for the, from 82 until they died. So the only way I'm really American, or white, for that fact, is because of the paperwork. But, uh, no, Cirque knows I'm uh, dark-skinned compared to her. <laughs> She's white, 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 Day with a tan, because she likes to be outside, but um, very pale. See, I got, the, I got that Mexican tint to me. So, how I mean it is, I appear you know, to be American to people, but I wasn't raised to be an American by my parents. Yeah, killing your black ass. Wow. I hate the way they do that shit. Ah, I don't know. Somebody's black ass. But uh, I don't think... Well, she says they don't give a fuck. They're not paid to care about anybody. They're doing a job. In the first place, once upon a time, I bet there were police that did care about people in small communities and shit like that in the old days. But now it's just a business. So 
yeah, you couldn't you couldn't possibly do a job like that and be emotional about it. And the uh, twelve hour shifts, the way they've uh, structured the work ethic and the work work timing for the police and and paramedics, you know, and they claim it's to save money, and it's really just wow, it's ex- the overtime is what these fuckers live for, you know, <laughs> so they can make some real money. I mean, wait a minute. I thought they were police. You know, I thought they were there to protect you, the public. And what they're doing is they're not. <laughs> they're trying to they're trying to finance a, another business or these guys have, you know, greedy bones. And it shouldn't be like that. People that are in law enforcement should <laughs> should be willing to you know, do things for other people. Not <laughs> wow, well, not what we turned into. What we've become is um, it's wrong. I don't know what to what to call it. Disappointing. There's names you know to I identify it with, but not being in it for so long and just being uh, reading of it is. It's way different. I'll give it that. And uh, Cirque was telling me yesterday, oh, I was in riots in the 90s. I I know this about her, but brought it all back to her. And the riots that she was in actually accomplished a goal. And they were, um, the police here turned on the crowd. And this is what changed everything to the direction it's in today, is the public said, wait a minute, okay, and now you police have gone too far. We won't have that. And they didn't. And they stopped it, and they retrained their, their uh, political system. And the people here, unless they're on the outside of the law, basically get along with the police. Of course, if you're uh, an outlaw, and you got... <clears throat> problems, then you're going to treat the cops bad, you know, or maybe you're just shy and you just avoid everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to do a solo today, but that's an hour. So with all that, there was really, I, I tried, but uh, I really didn't have much of a show for today. And I guess I'm just disappointed in how life is going uh, at home, my ex home, where I'm from, that thing that place, and uh, absolutely nothing I can do about any of this, except voice an opinion, and at least my opinion is based on stuff that I, I find to be truthful, you know, my sources, I trust them, so with that, I'm going to say, uh, Roger Wilco, over and out.